It is Super Swan from the future, and I've got a very exciting transfer window to bring you. The best thing is, opening me, so past Super Swan, doesn't even know what transfers have happened yet. I know, in about 20 minutes you'll know, but the past me has got no clue about what we've done. Very exciting times. So I'll hand you over to past me in the past to tell you about our end of season awards and we're going to bring you our summer transfer window. What's going on guys? My name is Adam, I am a super swan and welcome to episode 33 of the FM21 Deadpool Diaries and we have a transfer special ahead of us as we prepare for life in the championship for another year and as we continue to climb the league to reach the promised land of the Premier League. But first of all, we've got a season review. So let's, let's review on last year. Let's see how we got on, see who our best players were. So who was signing of the season? George Bello, signing of the season. He was at left back, a very solid left back option. 36 appearances, one goal, three assists, 7.11 average rating. Edmondson came in in January, a good centre back. He's going to be starting for us going forward. Charlie Good. Another centre-back. You know, that, so that's our top three sign-ins. Good, Edmondson and Bello. So the board seemed to be very happy, although only a D for Charlie Good. Because apparently we're paying him too much. Can't win with you, board. He was our third best player, according to you. He was our third best sign-in. Predo didn't even get them top five. But to be fair, Predo, he is an A-plus player. I'm excited to see how we get on with him. So the season results... Wrexham struggled to find their best form at times, but were otherwise able to enjoy a campaign which saw them produce a highly respectable finish. And I would agree. I think definitely in December, January, we just dropped off the face of the earth, which lost all momentum, lost all form. But then the start of the season and the end of the season were really, really good. So that puts us in an eighth place finish, which was a fantastic achievement for our team. Biggest win, 4-0 over Blackburn in August. A 2-1 win over Stoke was a match to remember. And the goal of the season was Riddell Richards as he runs from inside his own half. And let's watch that get goal together. It was the third goal against Millwall. Let's have a look. Let's see how good this goal is. They still need to put in a way of being able just to watch the goal like they did in previous football managers. Because the only way I can do it is if I actually load up the match so Richards comes inside, he's got three players around him, he takes a low shot in the bottom corner. It was a nice finish, to be fair. And that was Wrexham's goal of the season. But let's move on from there. Our finances, our reputation still the same. We've had a new sponsorship with £8 million. I have a funny feeling that uh, that's to do with Ryan Reynolds putting his money in. As that's why our sponsorship was up from from a hundred grand to thirty three million. So now that Wrexham are in the championship and we've got rich owners, everybody sniffing around to try and get a bit of that Wrexham sponsorship. Broadcast revenue up. That's to be expected now that we're in the championship. Corporates up as well. We did lose prize money, but I think that's because we were in the Papa John's Trophy last season. Match days down a little bit as well, but I'm not too worried about that. Merchandise sales, 400 grand. Sold nearly 5,000 shirts. Predo being the top shirt seller. Followed by Malakar, Richards, Phillips and Bello. Team of the season, Walton in goal. Bello, Pieri, Baptiste and Bogle. Barlow, Siverdurski and Phillips. Jew on the left, Predo on the right. Bobby Duncan up front. Can't really complain about that one. Although, uh, Jewel gets in with a 6.6 .6 on the left, which might uh, go a long way to seeing where we need to strengthen next season. Manager awards. I was the League One Manager of the Year. That, that was last year. Got to catch up, game. That was last season. George Bello, Fans Player of the Season. He's also the Young Player of the Year and the Signing of the Season. So our left back get a lot of accolades from our team. Obviously, we know about Richard's goal of the season. Bobby Duncan, top goal scorer, 14 goals. Barlow with the most assists with six. 
Bello had five player of the matches and the highest average rate in. And Bello was our highest transfer fee at 3.59. Souls was 3.5 as well. But to be fair, with that transfer fee comes a certain level of quality. And I think Bello did match that level of quality. Best 11. Let's have a look. So Emmanuel gets into the team as well as Bobby Duncan. But they make, make the bench. I think they don't quite make the team. So the team of the year is exactly the same as it was last season. So you can have a look and see what our team of the save is so far. Season review. Brexham can be perfectly satisfied with their season's work as they met expectations and did what was asked of them. We stayed up. That's all that mattered. But let's have a look. Board set initial budgets. What are we going to get? We're going to get 300 grand and 13 million to spend in the summer. Ooh. I like the sound of that. I'll probably move a bit of it into wages, to be honest. But 13 mil. What more can I ask for? The board are very generous with their transfer budgets. Club vision. Let's have a look. What they want to do. They want to reach the playoffs. Oh, that's a big, that's a big jump in expectations. So they do expect us to reach the playoffs next year. All oh, right. I want to get rid of defensively solid, but I'm not going to be able to. Can I get rid of direct? They want me to spend the budget. I think I'll be able to spend the budget. So I'm going to try and get rid of direct football. Can you let me get rid of it, please, Mr. Reynolds? No, he's not. But I will have to spend the original budget. So I'll have to spend 13 mil as best as I can. Team meeting. I'm going to have to tell the players playoffs, I think. So uh, is there a way I can say they're going to bring in more players? Let's have a look. I'm going to read through all these and see which ones we got. Right, I think I've picked the one I'm going to go for. It's going to be, it's been a long season. I hope you have a good break. Come back fully refreshed. I was going to reach the playoffs. The, the players are happy with that. I'm happy to, uh, to do that. I'll see you all when we get back. They're all happy with that as well. So brilliant. That looks to have gone really well. The players know that we're going to be going for playoffs next season. And I think now is time to look at the team report. So let's have a look. So let's, let's see where we're going to strengthen next season. So we'll make sure we get Rob McElhenney as our person doing the scout reports. So goalkeepers. Coleman's a backup, but Walton is the man I want to try and bring in. They still haven't renewed his contract. I'm hoping we can bring Walton back on a free transfer. Bello and Bogle are first choice, and we've got backups in both sides with uh, Cohen Bramall and Emmanuel on the right. So I'm happy with that. Pieri's not going to come back, I don't think, next season. We can take him out. Baptiste is off to the MLS. We can take him out. So we do have three solid centre-backs. So maybe if I can find one four-star centre-back to partner with Edmondson... That'll give us a better quality at the back. It's not like it was last year where we had to sign a whole new back line. I think it's only going to be like a centre-back to bring in there. Midfielders, were looking strong. We're looking very strong in midfield. Sivadurski's hopefully going to come back next season. Barlow, Stiller, Soares and Phillips. All good options in the middle. Callum Barlow's the big question mark. If we can try and hold on to him for another year, we might be looking quite good. Predo's a good option on the right. Soares is good in the middle. Clearly, we know where we need to strengthen. It's going to be attacking midfield on the left. And up front, Malakar's probably going to be starting striker. Bobby Duncan, I can try and bring him back in as a backup. But I think... I, well, I don't think... I think we're going to try and find a better option if we can. So I think as far as targets, left winger, 100%. Centre-back... 100%. Maybe even some depth on the right. Because we're not going to bring Oscar Bob back. Because Oscar Bob was awful. So maybe a backup right winger as well. So left wing, centre back, right wing. I think that's going to be the choices. So I think what we'll do, we'll come back for the start of next year. I've got a busy transfer ahead of me, or transfer market ahead of me. So I'll go into the future, speak to future me. To see how we got on in our tr summer transfer window. You are back with Future Super Swan. It's been, a, it's been a long time since I last checked in. As you can tell, I've uh, had a bit of a shave. I've sorted myself out a little bit. 
and I'm going to bring you our summer transfer window. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's jump straight into it. So we got a first of all look of last season because for whatever reason, sometimes they tick over to last season's transfers as opposed to this season's transfers. So we will start in June. As always, all the yellow dots mean that our head of youth development or Deadpool have brought them into the club. So I'm going to ignore most of them. But we're going to look at Luke Grant. He was a release from Chelsea, one of the Premier League youngsters. We're not going to see him much, but I thought I'd bring him in just in case. Because he has a four-star potential left back. So for someone to keep an eye on, he may never make it. But I thought, you know, we'll take a punt. We'll take a gamble on Luke Grant. We also raided Cardiff after we relegated them in the last episode. Well, we personally didn't, but... They, they, they're down in League One now. We don't have to worry about them. We raid them for their best youth prospect, Giza Jarvis. He's a three-star current ability, five-star potential striker. He is going to be about fourth-choice striker, but I am training him to be an inside forward. So he could be like Mark Jewell. They could be friends on the left-hand side, developing as inside forwards. But he's going to be in and around the squad. He's not going to be a starter by any means, but he's someone we're going to keep an eye on as his development goes on. We did bring in a new centre-back, Rob Dickey. He comes in from QPR for £3 million. Three and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. He's 28, he's in his prime, and I think he's going to be a very solid centre-back option this season. You know, he's not amazing, but he's good enough in most places. So he's going to be the ball-playing defender, or even just a standard centre defender, partner in Edmondson, at the back. And the last sign we've got Alex Hutchinson. He's a, he's, we're not going to worry about him. We're not going to see him much. But our most exciting summer transfer is Asuma Idrissi. He comes in for, how much did we bring him in for? Two million pounds we brought him in for. And he's going to be our new inside forward on the left-hand side. It's a position we've been struggling with for quite some time. And I'm hoping he's going to be the man to fill that gap Three and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential, Moroccan international. He flied through the work permit application and he's got a very good mentals, decent physicals, good finishing. I'm hoping he's going to make an impact on that left hand side. So that is the ins from last season. The outs, the big one is Elliot List. His time at the club has come to an end. He's gone to Luton for almost 400,000. And Elliot List and Kelleher are the two players left from our National League success, not counting Callum Barlow and Mark Jewell, who were the youth intake that season. But he's finally gone. He will be missed. He was our first big sign-in. Deadpool brought him in, and he did do a job for us as we climbed the league. So we do bid farewell to Elliot List. His time at Wrexham will not be forgotten. So we go to head to this season. We've brought some more ins in. Jack Perkins, we're not going to see much of him. He's ahead of youth development sign-in. Christian Walter is back. We did bring him in after he was released by Brighton. We already know about him. He's now our player, as opposed to loaning him from Brighton. Three-star currency, three-star potential. We know how good he is. He will do the job for us in the championship. And Deadpool's arguably best signing ever comes in the sign of a lone player from Manchester United called Ben Young. Now, he made the approach. I, I let him go away with it. But he's a brilliant player. Four-star current ability, five-star potential. Look at those attributes. Probably the best player at the club, I would say. And he can play anywhere across the midfield, whether it be deep-blind playmaker, standard midfielder, or even an advanced playmaker. So he can do a job for us anywhere in that midfield. So I'm very excited to see what Ben Young can do. And as I mentioned, Deadpool's probably best signing he's ever made. One to keep an eye on. We've got Steve Owen. We're not going to see him much. Ben Knight comes in on loan from Man City. Now, you might remember Ben Knight. He was playing against us when we played Man City a couple of seasons ago. He's a, an inside forward that cuts in from the right. Four-star current ability. Four-and-a-half-star potential on loan from Man City. So he's either going to be an inside forward or he can play advanced playmaker. He's got all the physical attributes. He's even got fantastic dribbling, good determination, good off the ball. 
So I'm very interested to see how he gets on. I'm hoping he's going to kick on and be one of our star players on the wing. We've got a couple more um, Deadpool signings and Dylan Williams and Keenan Carroll. We're not going to see them much. We did bring Bobby Duncan back to the club, signing for a million pounds from Derby. But I've told him he's going to be a fringe player because we've got a lot of good options now up front. I don't think he is going to be our starting striker. I think Malakar will be our starting striker. But for a backup option, three-star current ability, three-and-a-half-star potential, Bobby Duncan is a very good backup option. And if we look at the outs, I think there's not many outs I think that's worth talking about. If I go to the released players, is there anyone's? Karam Ainley, he did get released. He's now at Forest Green in League One. I would say League One is about his level, so he did manage to, to leave the club. Apart from that, I don't think there's any other outs that are of any note. So as we do go into the first game of the season, I'll show you the, the squad depth filtered by three stars. So we've got Coleman and Walton. Do we, we tell you about Coleman? I don't think we told you about Coleman. Our Deadpool signed a backup goalkeeper. Didn't think we needed one. I think we already know about him, though. Do we know about him? I don't know. You know about him now. Joel Coleman is our new backup goalkeeper. You might know about him, but either way... We've got two solid keepers at the club. Bellows on the left, Bogle on the right, no changes there. Edmondson and Rob Dickey are going to be our two starting centre-backs at the club. Midfield, we're looking pretty stacked. Ben Young, as we know, can play anywhere across the midfield. Callum Barlow still at the club. And more importantly than that, he has signed a new contract. So he will be at the club till at least 2028. And I've even put in a £35 million release clause for clubs in a higher division. So the 15 million price tag's now gone up to 35 million. He's happy at the club. He doesn't want to leave anymore. So Callum Barlow's still at the club. Hopefully we can keep him as we climb, hopefully into the Premier League at some point. We've got Sivadurski back on loan. We talked about that, I believe, in the last episode. We've got loads of players in the midfield. Still are still here as well. Saws dropped down to three stars, but... We'll be keeping an eye on his development as he's another five-star potential player. Idrissi comes in as a star player on the left. Predo and Ben Young fighting on the right-hand side. And up front, we've got Malakar, Ben Knight, Giza Jarvis, Bobby Duncan. We've got lots and lots of options. So I think if more than anything, we've strengthened our backup players to kind of give us a bit of an edge as we head into the championship season. So for the first game, we're not going to show it today, but just to give you an idea of what the team does look like. So we've got Walton in goal, Bramall, Dickey, Edmondson and Bogle, first choice at the back. We've got Young, Sivadurski and Barlow in the midfield. So Ben Young occupying the deep line playmaker, which allows Barlow to move into the middle. Idrissi and Knight on either side. Malakar is up front. I think Bellow's on international duty. Yeah, he's, going to be, he's at the Olympics. Won't see him, so Bramall is on the left as opposed to Bello. Predo's still sort of not quite fit enough. That's why he's not in the side. But I'm very excited about this squad. That if I show you the competitions, if I show you the season preview, Wrexham are fifth favourites for the league, which tells you a lot about the strength of our squad. And Predo is still in the Media Dream 11. So clearly Predo is a bit of a star player at Wrexham. Something to keep an eye on there. But the fact that we're fifth favourites, higher than Brentford, who came down from the Premier League last year, says a lot about our squad. So I'm very excited to see how we get on. And I think I'm going to end the episode there. So that is the opening of our season. A very good transfer window. A fantastic achievement last year as well. So we're now going to focus on next season. Playoffs is the aim, and playoffs is what Ryan Reynolds wants for the club. So, uh, we best perform, otherwise, who knows what can happen. But leave a like if you enjoyed, guys. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 2021 content. We will be uploading Deadpool Diaries every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6 p.m. GMT. And tune in next time as we kickstart our next season in the Championship. Playoffs is the aim, but how are we going to get on in the first couple of games of the season? Thank you very much for watching.